What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video. Today, we're gonna to be taking a look at some Excel functions that you most likely have never heard of. Now there are so many functions in Excel, I don't expect almost anybody to know all of them. That would be pretty unrealistic, but there are some in there that I recently have learned about or I've been using that I know most people don't know about. And so I wanna share those with you because I think some of these are really, really interesting. So let's not waste any time. Let's jump right onto my screen and take a look. Let's jump right into it with a function that I recently learned about when I was working with one of my consulting clients. They showed me this function. And I was like, I've never seen that function before, but it makes sense because it's specifically geared toward the finance sector, which I you know, have never been in. I've mostly been in healthcare and IT. And so this PMT function basically calculates the payment for a loan based on a constant payment and constant interest rate, which is what we have right here. We have some people who have taken out loans, they have uh, an interest rate, and then they have their term, how long, how many years they have uh, to kind of pay that off. So we're going to come in here, we're going to say PMT. This is going to calculate the payment for a loan based off of the things I just mentioned, constant payments and constant interest rate. We're going to open up our parentheses. The rate is a 5% interest rate. The NPER is the total number of payment periods, and that's going to be this number right here, the 5. And then for the very last one, we have the PV. That's the present value or the total loan amount. And so that's going to be uh, this one right over here. Now, if we just close this and we run it, it's going to work. But this is not going to be the monthly payment. This is going to be the yearly payment. If we want the monthly payment, as it says right here in uh, this part, we just need to divide the C2 by 12. And then we need to multiply the D2, that's this number right here, by 12 as well. So we're going to say times 12. And then we'll run this. So this is going to be this person's for this loan uh, ID. This is going to be this person's $471 amount. And we can drag this down and you can see these are the uh, monthly payments that they'll need to make. Now, right now you can see it's in red. That's because it's a negative number. That's how much they're spending. But if you want to make it positive, you can come in here to this B2 and say it's minus B2 and it turns it into a positive number. So this is how much in a positive number, like if we did absolute that this person is going to pay monthly. And I just found this one fascinating. I had never used this one before, and so I thought uh, you guys might enjoy this as well. Pretty interesting, mainly used for, like I said, loans, where you know the interest rate and the uh, term in years. It could also be the term in months, and then you just wouldn't need to do uh, some of the alterations that we had made right in here. So uh, really, really interesting one. Let's go to the next one. And this one I found really useful when I'm debugging really long, complex functions. Formula text basically takes your really complicated text. And if we click in here, this is a pretty complicated text. We're doing, uh, we're using by row, we're using a lambda function, we're using xlookup to then come down here and multiply it. And we have all these different uh, anchored cell references. It's pretty tough. And so if I want to come in here and I want to read all this, it can be a little bit challenging. So what we can do is we can come over here and we can say uh, formula text. It returns a formula as a string, which can be really helpful because uh, sometimes when you start uh, messing around with all this, you accidentally change something or you, uh, you know, get rid of something and whoops, then you just, you know, you destroy the whole thing. And so this can be really helpful because now we can see this entire thing in just a string and we can come in here and we can look around. We can even, uh, if we wanted to paste it as a value, so then we can come in here and actually change it up. We can say, okay, uh, maybe I don't need to take this. I'll get rid of this and I can make changes to it and I won't necessarily be breaking or messing with the actual formula. And so I think this one is really, really useful. One that I don't think a lot of people have seen or used before. Let's go into our next function. That's going to be the let function. Now the let function is actually not used for something as simple as we're about to do uh, typically, but it can be used to kind of organize and make it a little bit easier to read when you're doing complex formulas. So as you get more advanced in Excel and you're using a lot more complex functions, you can use this let function and it'll allow you to kind of join together multiple calculations in kind of an easier way to read. And so let's go ahead and try it right now. We're going to say is equal to, then we're going to say let. And let's just read this real quick. 
is as a science calculation results to names useful for storing intermediate calculations and values by defining names inside a formula. These names only apply within the scope of the let function. So if we assign certain names, it's not going to you know, affect other things outside of this function. It's just going to occur within it. Now, when we put our parentheses here, you can see we have name one, name value one, calculation or name two, name value two. And this can be a little bit confusing. So let's just start writing it out and then we'll see exactly what this is. Now, what we want to do is we want to say, OK, if they have sales that are less than six thousand, we're going to give them a 10 percent bonus. But if they have sales that are between 6,000 and 8,000, we want to give them a 15% bonus. And if it's higher than $8,000, we'd give them like a 20% bonus. And then after we do that, we want to take this number and multiply it times that bonus rate. And so there's multiple steps that we're going to be doing in here. And the let function allows us to kind of programmatically select what we want in a very logical formulated way. And it feels nice to write. I'll just say that right away. So let's say we want to do, uh, we'll take the sales and that's going to be this right here. So we're going to just uh, name that. Now, if I say alt enter, it's going to kind of organize this for me. So I'm going to say alt enter. And typically you'd even come in here and you do like some spaces or something. You don't have to do this, uh, but it looks nice, right? If you do it right. So we have our sales C2 here. We have that specified. The next thing we have to do is we're going to define and then create our calculation. So we're going to define our name for this. So this is going to be called our bonus rate. I need to spell that right. But now we're going to do a comma. And next we're going to have our name value two calculation or name three. This is where we're going to add our calculation. So we're going to say if, and we'll do... Uh, sales. Now, this isn't this sales. This is this sales right here because we're naming it and then we're using it. So let's actually change this so that uh, it's easy to note the difference. We're going to say a current sales, Do current sales, just like that. So now we're going to take this. I'm going to paste that right here. So we have our current sales. If the current sales are less than, uh, let's say, 6,000, then if that's true, what do we want to do? We want to give them a 0.1. That's a 10% bonus. So we want to give them a 10% bonus. If it's false, we're going to do a nested if function. So we're going to check for another condition and see if it's met. So this time we're going to say if the current underscore sales is, uh, let's do less than or equal to 7,500. If it is 7,500 or below, which is going to be these two right here, then we're going to give them a 15% bonus. They made more sales. They deserve more bonus. So we're going to do a comma, and we're going to say, if that is true, then 0.15. And if it's false, now we'll actually do a false one. We'll do 0.2. It'll be uh, 20% or 0.2, just to make it more easily uh, readable. Now we need to close this parentheses to make sure we close off this if statement. And we can end it with a comma. Now we're going to go down again. And so you're starting to see we're kind of creating this uh, internal logic all within this let function. We've defined our current sales. We're using our current sales uh, in this formula. And now we're going to do another calculation. So now we'll call this one our bonus right here. So we're going to say bonus. And what is the bonus going to actually be? The bonus is going to be the current sales right here times then we're going to do their bonus rate because now we've defined it. So we're going to come right here. We're going to specify the bonus rate. And then lastly, we just need to specify the very last piece, which is this is the bonus. This is our output. And so now we're going to run this. And now you can see here is our bonus and it all works well. Now for this example, I would actually say this is uh, somewhat simple, but as you get really complex, uh, this can come in a lot of handy because you can define different parameters and then you can use them, or maybe you want to call them variables. That's more common with you know programming. Um, but this is kind of like you know a little program that you're writing within this let function. And so this allows you to take a lot of control with naming your variable, using your variable, creating multiple calculations, all within one function, which is really powerful as you get more advanced, like I was saying. So this one to me is really, really neat. One that I think is pretty underutilized, but is a really neat function within Excel. Let's go on to our next one. And here we have 
hyperlink. Now, if you've ever worked with any type of link within uh, Excel, it shows up just like this. And then you go and you click on it. It's going to take you to the location. But sometimes you're going to be passing this off to a client and maybe you don't want it to actually say that. And so what you can do is you can say is equal to, and you'll type in, I need to spell this right, you'll type in hyperlink. It's going to say creates a shortcut or jump that opens a document stored on your hard drive, server, or the internet. So the hyperlink could be anywhere. It could be even in your, you know, like it said, uh, your hard drive or server. But you're going to open this up and you're going to specify the link location. So you're going to specify this uh, A1, and then you're going to do a comma, and you can name it whatever you'd like. So for this one, I'm going to say, just click, and I need to name it uh, within parentheses, but I'm going to say click here, and I'll close the parentheses. And now these will take you to the exact same place, but this one is a lot more user-friendly. And so when I'm handing things off to a client uh, that you know may or may not be super Excel, you know, friendly or really know what they're doing, I might make it even more user friendly by doing something like this. And so they can go and they know to click here, I can leave some custom message for them. Our very last function that we're going to take a look at is this one right here. It's EO month, which stands for end of month. And this one is actually uh, really, really useful. I mean, you can think of Let's say you have a subscription business and within this subscription business, you say when someone pays this month, they get till the end of that month for their current payment or they get to the end of next month or whatever it is. And so we're going to just look at the start date, but then we'll also take into account something called an offset. And so let's come in here. We're going to say EO month. This is going to return the serial number of the last day of the month before or after a specified number of months. Let's go ahead and open this parentheses. We have our start date and then we have our months. So right here, we need to specify how many months we're going to do. And that's this months to offset. So once we pass these through, you'll see that we had not offsetting by any months. It's with just within this current month. So the end of this month is going to be 131 of 2024. If we drag this down, we're going to offset it by one month. So we're going to say, okay, the start date is 315 of 2024, but we need to move forward one month and look at the end of that month. So this will be 430 of 2024. We can also go backward. So this is 620 of 2024. We can look at the end of the month looking back one month. We can even look ahead six months in the future. So six months ahead of this is going to be 430 of 2025. And this is, uh, you know, even in the future of where I am now. And this is just really useful. There are some specific use cases, like I was saying, maybe subscriptions, where you're going to want to be able to look ahead or maybe even backward in some cases uh, to see when the last day of the month is, to maybe know when to bill them or when to uh, look for a refund or whatever it is. Maybe they're signing up for a six-month subscription. So you want to know when the last day they're going to have access to that service is. And so again, this one I think is one that not a lot of people have used or know about. But there are a lot of times where people will try to recreate this EO month function themselves, and it's quite complicated. And then they realize, oh, there's already something built in for that. I just have never seen it. And so this is another really, really cool function I think a lot of people don't know about. And so that is all the functions that we're going to look at in this lesson. A lot of really, really cool stuff that Excel can do and knows how to do that you may have been trying to recreate yourself or just have never heard of it. And so it's pretty neat. Uh, if you like this video, be sure to like and subscribe. I really appreciate it. If you haven't already, I have a full course on analystbuilder.com for Excel, as well as SQL and Python and Pandas and a bunch of other stuff as well. So be sure to go check that out. But with that being said, I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one.